Dave Palumbo with Palumbo's Pythons and Boas for another installment of Muscle Serpents University. And as you can see, I am holding an Australian olive python here, and that's the topic of today's show. Stay tuned. <laughs> Dave Palumbo here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas, and a lot of people have been requesting that I talk about olive pythons because there's not a lot of information out there on them, and uh, not that many people do videos, and not that many people keep them because they're pretty big snakes, but they they don't really get pretty thick. This guy is a olive, but he's actually head albino. I got him from Jeff Hartwig, who's one of the best olive python breeders in the United States, also a terrific pole vaulter back in his day. And this guy is probably about a year and a half old, and he's, he's pretty damn big. He, I got him, and he was really small. He's put a lot of size on fast, and I've been trying to beef him up a little bit because I'm trying to breed him to an albino female I have. I'm going to show you in a minute. And the problem is with these snakes is they can be cannibalistic. Now, a lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that. Um, I found out the hard way. My female uh, killed one of the males that I put her in with because, you know, most people use smaller males with bigger females and with olives that could be a problem not all of them are like that but uh, i've talked to troy from k brothers who's a big olive python breeder in australia and he told me the same thing he said you know a lot of them are fine but then every once in a while you get a couple of them that are very aggressive to other males so i really uh i try to actually put him in with her a little earlier in the season and you know she was very aggressive so i took him out and I'm just trying to grow him a little bigger. So hopefully by next year, he'll be big enough to breed. I think he's, you know, he's obviously big enough to breed now, but I just don't think he's big enough for the female. And I'm gonna show you in a minute, uh, my female. And why don't we come over here? And she's like my pride and joy. I really love her. She's, she's an aggressive snake. Not towards me necessarily, although I've gotten bitten a few times by her. But she's aggressive towards males. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do a little introduction at some point and we'll see. Uh, how they get along. She's not uh, very friendly though towards the males that I've introduced her to. But as you can see, she's she's a big snake. She's about 10 feet and she's pretty thick for an olive python. I mean, olive pythons are not thick snakes by any means. But if you look at her head, hopefully you can get a close up on that. I mean, it's just, I think the small mini scales on these olive pythons, which give them that really sleek appearance, just look so cool. To me, it looks armor plated on the head. And if you just zoom in on the head, you almost, it looks like a little dinosaur. And obviously the red eyes are, are terrific. To me, the albino olive python is one of the most beautiful looking snakes in the world. And, and you know, a lot of people just don't know that much about these olives. And, and I think they're good pets. I've been handling this guy since he's a baby and he's never struck at me once. Um, he's like very, very tame. She, which who I got a little bigger, if she's hungry, she might take a bite out of your hand. <laughs> Not always. She's usually pretty good, but if she's hungry, you gotta watch out. So now, let's see. Let, let's let's give them a little introduction to each other. Let's see what happens. Oh, whoop. No. See, he's scared of her. He doesn't he don't want any part of her. <laughs> he's like, no, thank you. She's not ready. I'm not ready for her yet. Um, she's actually uh, kind of just bad. She's uh, just ate a meal probably about four days ago, so she's digesting. Um, but this guy, I don't think uh, I'm gonna put them together this year. It's kind of late in the season already. I'm probably gonna wait till the beginning of next year. What I was told was by Troy from K Brothers is that um, when you stop feeding these females for about four weeks, they'll lose that aggressive instinct towards the males. You would think that they would get hungrier and they would want that, but I guess when they f don't eat a lot, they forget about the food and they seem to behave better. That's the trick that he's been using with his uh, olive pythons uh, to get them to breed, especially the aggressive females. He says the ones that aren't aggressive, he puts the males right in with them and they're fine. So once again, it, it comes down to, you know, strategy. And <laughs> with snakes, they can be aggressive towards each other. Obviously, ball pythons aren't, boas aren't, you know, carpet pythons really aren't either. But with snakes that are aggressive towards each other, you have to have strategy. And you can't just throw the male in there and leave it in there or you wind up with a dead snake like I did. And, I learned the hard way and hopefully you guys can learn you know, from our, my mistakes and other people's mistakes in the past. Once again, it's not a topic that's really talked about a lot, but I think it's important that people know that. Now obviously if I bred this uh, head albino olive, and this is obviously the natural color in the, in the wild of the olive python, it's got the olive green color. If I breed this head albino to the albino, 
I'll have a 50% chance of getting albino olives. The other 50% will be like this guy, a head albino. So it's, it'll be a great clutch if I can get this thing to go at some point. I was hoping for this year. It doesn't look like it's gonna work out that way. Um, I have a beautiful female. She's very healthy. She loves to eat, but she's, she, like I said, she's kind of aggressive. And she's probably mad now that I'm, I'm holding this guy, but uh, he didn't want any part of her. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna mess around and, and have any uh, big uh, confrontations tonight. You know, once again, hopefully you guys will understand that in order to have an olive python in your house, you gotta have caging that's bigger. This is actually too small for her, this boa tub I got her in. She'll be going into a six foot cage that I ordered from Vision. Um, she's gonna have a huge space. And that, you know, that might be a problem too. Trying to breed her in such a small cage is not probably right for her. I was told, put her in a bigger cage. It's gonna be better for her. She's gonna have more room. It's not gonna be so protective of this environment. And once again, you have to have the caging capabilities. Uh, I'm moving into my permanent snake room probably in another two to three weeks. I know a lot of people have asked me for tours of it. We will, once we get it up and running, I will give you a tour and show you exactly how I built the thing uh, as far as you know where I put the electrical, where I put the lighting, where I put the sinks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's going to be pretty much the three rooms. So she's getting a little aggressive. Uh, I think she's getting hungry. She, she sees dinner here. So we don't want her to strike at me or <laughs> our good friend here, Mr. Head Albino, Olive Python. I hope you guys learned something about olive pythons today. Uh, I wish I could have showed you some breeding behavior, maybe in a future video. Hopefully if she cooperates and he gets a little bigger. Uh, for now though, I'm Dave Palumbo with Palumbo's Pythons and Boas for another installment of Muscle Serpents University.